Hello, and I'd like to thank you for joining us here at the Greenbrier Church online for our Wednesday prayer prompt. Over the last two weeks, we've been looking at the fourth psalm and talking about how we can draw closer to God in the midst of the current trouble facing our communities and our homes. The first week, David asked you to take the time to remember how God has been faithful to you in the past. Then we noticed that if we want to keep from sinning, we need to take the time to think long and hard about how we're going to react to the world around us. Last week, we discussed the fact that our words always expose the truth of what's in our heart. And unfortunately, they often reveal our bitterness and our doubt towards God when things aren't going well. So tonight, we're going to continue our prayer through the fourth psalm. But before we go any farther, we need to take a moment and we need to read the psalm together. God, you are my righteousness, my champion, defender, Answer me when I cry for help. Whenever I was in distress, you enlarged me. I'm being squeezed again. I need your kindness right away. Grant me your grace, hear my prayer, and set me free. Listen to me, you elite among men. How long will you defame my honor and drag it down into shame? Will you ever stop insulting me? How long will you set your heart on shadows, chasing your lies and delusions? May we never forget that the Lord works wonders for every one of his devoted lovers. And this is how I know that he will answer my prayer. Tremble in awe before the Lord and do not sin against him. Be still upon your bed and search your heart before him. Offer sacrifices of righteousness and trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Lift up the light of your face over us. You have placed gladness in my heart that is better than when their, cor- when their corn and their new wine abound. I will both lie down in peace and sleep, for you, Lord, make me dwell safely and securely. Tonight I want us to look at verse 5, offer sacrifices of righteousness and trust in the Lord. I want you to take a moment and reflect on the word worship. I'm going to go off the assumption that when you hear the word worship, what you normally think about is Sunday morning where we get dressed up in our worship clothes and we sing songs and take a contribution and spend time around the table and hear a sermon. And while I love corporate worship that happens on Sundays when we all get together, the Bible would define worship in a deeper way, one that happens more than just in a weekly organized environment. According to Scripture, worship is an ongoing event which happens in your heart that overflows into your life and is seen in what you desire, what you say, what you do. Whether you realize it or not, you are constantly in a state of worship. You are always worshiping something because you were created to worship. It's your nature. The question is who or what has captivated your heart? David is often called a man after God's own heart because it's very clear that his heart is captivated by God. Now, we don't know specifically what sacrifices David is going to make or how he'll practically put his trust in the Lord, but we can tell from this psalm that his heart is captivated by God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. When we're reading scripture, we always need to remember the context. And there's nothing in this psalm that would lead us to believe that David's in the middle of experiencing the blessings or the prosperity of God. Actually, it's quite the opposite. David's facing terrible hardships and suffering. Yet in the midst of his situation, his heart is still captivated by the things of God. I wonder if the same thing could be said for us. I'm honest enough to admit that my heart is often captivated by other things. Unfortunately, when I'm facing a struggle or trial, my heart is filled with murmuring and grumblings about how unfair God's being in my life. And in those moments, it's so easy to turn my affection towards lesser things. And the opposite is true as well. My heart seems to be more captivated by God when I experience his blessings. It's human nature to be affectionate towards the blessings. Maybe you've noticed the same truth in your life as well. We all struggle with what we call conditional worship. As long as God is good to me, as long as every traffic light is green and I find an an open line at the bank or a front parking spot with plenty of shade at Target, well, then and only then am I captivated by Jehovah. What we're really captivated by is the blessing, not the one who provides the blessing. 
David is a living example of how we can endure suffering and trials while still being deeply captivated by God. Let me let you in on a little secret. When our hearts are captivated by God, especially in times of trial and suffering, our worship is always so much sweeter. David's not saying that we need to ignore the pain that we're experiencing. Actually, David takes the time to mention the pain in his life. But he also seems to have this attitude that he's willing to allow God to remove any blessing that competes for God's place in his heart. Every one of us are experiencing a little bit of pain right now. Our new normal is anything but normal. But maybe we're being given an opportunity in time to experience the pain of God removing the blessings from our lives that are in constant competition for the place where only He needs to reside. As we take a moment to pray tonight, we need to consider that the trial we're experiencing is meant by God to produce a deeper level of worship in us than we've ever experienced before. There's nothing that this world can offer us that will satisfy our soul like Jesus. So the most loving thing that our Savior can do is take away the things that provide false hope. Tonight, let's take a moment to discuss the things that compete for God's place in our lives. And then let's take a moment to pray that we will worship God in the midst of life, whatever life throws our way. Especially that we can draw close to God when times are difficult. And hard because Jesus is the one who provides rest, the rest that our souls long for and our lives truly need. Join me in prayer. Father, I want to thank you for your church, for the bride of Christ, and for the way that you have allowed us to come and to be a part of the body. And Lord, the way that you have created us to worship together in the body. And Father, I pray that we will. Focus on the fact that we are always worshiping and that that will lead us to worship things that are only worthy of our worship and our praise and our adoration, that we will only worship you. Father, I know it's great to have blessings in our lives, but I ask you to take away any blessing that competes for your place in our heart so that we will be drawn to love you and to worship you and to praise you and to give adoration to you and to you alone. Father, we love you. Because you loved us first, we are able to love you. We are thankful for your grace and your mercy that allows us to come and to pray and to talk to you. Father, we pray that you hear our prayer this evening and that we will draw closer to you, especially in these uncertain times. And Lord, we ask this prayer through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week, that you are able to experience what it means to have a heart that is captivated by God. Go in peace, and I look forward to seeing you soon.